I enjoyed this morning. Uh, God is good all the time, and uh, I just appreciate the opportunity to uh, be able to come and be with you. I, I, I did think that there was a clock back there on that wall. I guess I was, it never has been. Well, it, it reminded, I, on my way home today, it reminded me of, of the church I pastored in Piedmont. Uh, we, at first, we met in the old um, gymnasium building right down downtown Piedmont. And uh, we met in several different rooms depending on what was going on. And uh, this was happened to be, if you're standing there in front of the gymnasium building, and they got all different rooms in it. Uh, they got a lower front door that you go in, and there's some rooms down there. So we were meeting down there in one of the big rooms. And uh, they had a clock uh, on the wall back there. I, th I think the ladies in the church intentionally put that clock for me to see. Uh, and so uh, they had it up there. And so I, I would constantly watch it to see what time it was and how much time I had used or had left or whatever. Well, uh, and so it was good. And uh, so they decided to change the furniture around and they moved all the seats around and uh, moved the pulpit to a different place. But they moved the clock where I could see it right in front of me again. They moved it from over here to uh, straight up in there. So uh, one Sunday I was just going at it preaching and uh, I hadn't looked at my watch. I, was, I kept watching the, the clock. And uh, oh, this fella in the church got up and left. And uh, I said, he must have had some kind of, uh, he must have had to go to the bathroom real bad or something because he don't normally get up and walk out. Not many of them would, but I'd never seen him get up and leave. So, but I didn't pay that much attention to it. And I just kept on going off, glanced up at the clock. And... Uh, I happened to realize, after glancing at it two or three times, it was, uh, had stopped at about three minutes to 12, and we normally got out by 12 o'clock. So I, I looked at my watch, and it was 20 after 12. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it, it's good to have a clock, for, uh, especially for me, because... Now I, I can't look, glance at my watch so easy. I got one of these Fitbit where you have to push it to get the time on it. It's six nineteen, so we. Uh, I'll try to get us out of here by seven thirty. So, <laughs> but anyway, it. Uh, I just wanted to kind of share that story with you. What what had happened uh, about clocks? That's the reason I was looking. But I, I was thinking y'all had one. You need one, especially when I come. But. Uh, because I do, I get to talking, and I pre time don't mean a thing to me when I'm up here, unless I look at my watch. And uh, okay, let me find my glasses again because I uh, I have to have my reading glasses to even see what book of Bible I'm in. And uh, so uh, I want us to look uh, at uh, back here in, in the in the New Testament at. Uh, uh, I don't forgot what book of Bible I was in. Where, where did I go to? Uh, Got to find my place, folks. And, uh, nope, that's not it. Uh, there it is. I got it stuck up there where I can see it. And, uh, nope, that's not it either. <laughs> hey, I, I, you know, I'm not having the best of days. Uh, I know I got it marked here somewhere, and uh, but I'm having a hard time finding it today. And uh, if you give me a moment, I'm gonna. I got so much. Look, I got so much stuff crammed in here that uh, I forget my head that if it's not uh, tied on to me. And I thought I had it marked. My marker must have moved somehow or another. Okay, I did find it. Uh, I had turned to it, but I just didn't think it was the right place. Colossians, in the New Testament there. 
Uh, we're looking at chap uh, in chapter four. Uh, I, I want us to talk this evening about walking the walk and talking the talk. We've heard that expression, haven't we? And what does that mean? It means that uh, uh, if we're going to uh, try to do a certain way, then we need to live that way. If we walk, if we talk like we're going to live that way, then we need to to walk that way. We we need our lives need to express it. And uh, so this is what uh, Paul, I believe, here is expressing to us uh, here in the uh, book of Colossians. And uh, I just want to uh, read the first few verses, but we're going to focus on the last couple of verses of chapter 6 there. Uh, he says, Masters, give unto your uh, servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer. Watch in the same with thanksgiving. Withal praying also for us that God would open un unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Now here's what we want to vo uh, focus on primarily is verses 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Talk the talk and walk the walk. On my way over here this evening, uh, I, I know I've probably said it before, if you don't remember, I live over down below Woodmont High School going towards Simpsonville on, uh, just on, off West Georgia Road. And uh, so uh, it takes me about, I guess, 12, 15 minutes uh, to get over here. So I have a little bit of time to think. And I was thinking about uh, when I was uh, coming over here uh, about some, some kind of illustration about do, dealing with walk, with walking. And uh, I myself have walked a lot. I think I mentioned it this morning. I, I, I need to get back in the habit of walking because uh, I was at one point walking about four miles, three and a half, four miles a day, and sometimes walking on, twice a day. And I was able to keep my weight down and blood pressure down and all the good things. And uh, so I, I, I I'm, uh, was trying to, because see, I'm having a hard time getting my coat button. And uh, so I don't want to buy any new suits. I'm too old for that. It, I so want to keep wearing the ones uh, uh, I've got. But uh, I need to get back in the habit of walking. And uh, I was thinking as I was driving over here about an uncle, a, a great uncle that I have. It was the only great uh, that I remember. My mom was the youngest of uh, nine children, I think. And my dad was the youngest of uh, about ten and I'm the youngest of mom and dad both. And so uh, uh, all of my uncles, uh, great uncles, were gone by the time I came. I, only, I, I knew one grandmother, and she was a step, my mother's stepmother, so she really was. But uh, I, I loved her like a grandmother. And then on my dad's side, I knew this great uncle for a while. And he, uh, just to say it simply, was a hobo. Uh, he walked all everywhere he went, uh, hitchhiking, jumping on trains. He traveled all over the country. And every once in a while, he would uh, uh, show up at uh, our house, and he'd spend a few nights. This was back when I was a kid. Uh, he was my dad's sister's, my dad's mother's brother. That's what it is. Hamp. Uncle Hamp was his name. Uh, he would always say, Dad would say that he would uh, uh, like to drink a little bit, and he would get a little high, and he would say, 
lamplight, moonlight. There's nothing like a blank Fulbright. <laughs> and uh, that was his way of expressing himself. But he, he walked, and, and Dad always told the story about uh, his mom and dad having run a boarding house down on the lower end of Pelzer, down on Lyman or Adger or Street, one of the places down there. Now, this would have been back during Depression, 40s and all that, you know, way back, way back then. And uh, he would, uh, uh, he just, you know, he'd come and stay a while, and then he might stay a day or two, or he might stay a week and be gone, especially there. He would come and stay with us maybe a day or so and spend the night and be gone. Uh, but uh, Dad always told the story that uh, one day he, uh, he walked in and he stayed there about uh, three or four weeks at the, the boarding house uh, that uh, his mom ran down there. And uh, he got up one morning and uh, told them to, uh, told him, please go out back and get a load of wood and bring it back in. Well, he wasn't much for doing anything, so uh, he went out, he didn't say a word, walked out the back door, and they didn't see him again for about a year. Uh, he just rather get on his way rather than bring in the pile of wood. Uh, but he walked everywhere he went. I remember the last time he, w he came by our house, I was probably about 12, 13 years old, I think, and he, he stopped by our house. Uh, he, we had, I think it was a Sunday afternoon, we had been to visit uh, some relatives and came back home, and he was sitting on the front porch. And uh, he, he stayed with us for a couple of days. But I remember he had on two pair of pants, and, uh, and he had a little bag with him, had every, all of his belongings with him. And uh, he, uh, he left that day and was on his way to Anderson. And uh, uh, someone found him dead. Uh, you remember where the old... Uh, Outdoor theater used to be going in toward Anderson. It was right in that area. He was headed that way, but he just fell dead on the side of the road, and he, he was found there. Uh, and But, yet, like I said, I, I was talking about all that because he was a man who walked, walked a lot everywhere he went. I'm sure he caught rides. Uh, but uh, what the Lord is talking about here symbolically in walking is that our behavior as a Christian, the way we conduct ourselves is what uh, he is expressing here that we need to walk the walk and talk the talk. And if we walk it and, and, and talk it, then uh, there's no question about it. Don't you just uh, not like someone who will say, this is the way you ought to do it and they don't do it themselves. Well, this is what Paul is trying to get across to us here is that uh, if you're going to talk what a Christian's supposed to do and how they're supposed to behave, then you ought to act like that. Don't, don't say it for someone else. It's all right to encourage others to behave that way, but uh, you don't have a whole lot of uh, uh, validity or a whole lot of value in what you say unless you do it uh, yourself. So this is what Paul wants us to under the stand uh, uh, here about that. Uh, Elton Trueblood once said that faith lives or dies not by what goes on in churches, but by what as a result of the churches goes on outside of them. Now what he is talking about is that we as a church, as Christians, as those of us who are believers, if we come to church and uh, we study the Bible, and we are to practice the Bible, and we are to do what the Bible leads us to do, behave like a Christian is supposed to ha behave, and then when we leave out the uh, front door, the side door, whatever it is, the people that we come in contact with, uh, they'll see that Christianity living within us. We ought to walk to walk. They ought to see how we behave in here they ought to see that out there in the world. Because if we act one way here and somewhere, and act another way out there in the world, then we've got it all messed up, and we're not walking the walk or talking uh, the talk. So uh, the church can be effective. It can be a witness to the world 
Only if the people of the church are witnesses to the world by the way that they live their lives. So live as a Christian. Uh, walk the walk and talk the talk. Uh, Paul here is telling us that we need uh, to do just that. Look again at verse 5. He says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. He's talking about people outside the church, people who are not within the fold of Christianity. So they can see how we are. Uh, over there in the book of Acts, when uh, they were having these big revivals and people were coming in to the early church, uh, an outsider looked at them and see, see how they love one another. See how they love each other. And that's what people ought to say about us as a church, as Christians. See how they love one another. See how they help one another. See how they walk the walk. They're talking the talk. And they're behaving uh, in the way that they tell us that the world should behave. So we are to walk uh, in our daily lives toward them who are without. Those who are outside the church. And certainly if there are other people, other Christians, other church members of other churches, they ought to see us behaved in the right way. Uh, but, uh, but we can be a witness only if we are behaving the right way. So we need to walk the walk uh, to, toward those who are the, without. Uh, but secondly, we are to uh, not only walk toward those who are without, but look back again at uh, verse 5. It says we are to redeem the time. Now, what, what is he talking about there, redeeming the time? Well, I believe he is saying that we as Christians need to use our time wisely, uh, not be lazy, not be those who will not, you know, expect others to get the job done. If somebody's in need, they expect somebody else to get it done. Uh, they might call the church office. Uh, do something for that person if they need it. Then get the church office involved with it. But be the first uh, to, to redeem the time. Use your time wisely uh, as a Christian. And this will speak to the world. It will be a, a great witness to others without, uh, of the church. And they'll see that you mean business for being a child of God. So walk and redeem your time. Walk uh, in wisdom and, and uh, let others see what is going on. But also, we are to walk in wisdom with our talk, not only with our uh, time and uh, with our wisdom, uh, but with our talk. Look at verse 6. It says, let your speech be always. Now, I don't know why the old king, king's language always leaves off S on always. But uh, always, in King James Version, that's where it always comes up. Look at there, I said always. So let your speech be always or always with grace. With grace. Now what does the word grace mean? Well, I, I, I remember preaching a sermon one time that grace, you, uh, you can take each letter and it means God's riches at Christ's expense. Uh, but it means to be loving and kind and good uh, toward all, all people. So with grace, uh, you know, doing it without ex expectation of reward. But we know that our reward will eventually come. Uh, if it's not here, it'll come in when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. So we are to do it uh, in time. Uh, and we are to do it in the way that the Lord leads us in doing it with grace. So walk in wisdom uh, and walk uh, with your time, walk with your talk. Uh, but then also he says, walk uh, in wisdom with your talent. Look again at, at verse 6. It says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, uh, that it, it looks and tastes good to others, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. And uh, 
what he is wanting us to do there is to use what experiences that we have, what talents we have as a child of God, as a Christian, to, to help others, to benefit them. And then we'll be walking the walk and talking the talk. Uh, R.G. Lee tells the story of a, a woman that uh, uh, saw this uh, little boy that was standing at the, the window of a grocery store, and she was touched by what she saw. He had his little face pressed up against the, the window, and he was looking in at the candy counter and all the uh, different uh, candy was in there. It, may, it put me in the reminder of going to the old dime store down there in Pelzer. You know, you walk into the county counter there, and it had all kind of different can uh, and you had a dime to spend. You say, give me a nickel's worth of this and a nickel's worth of that or whatever. And that kind of is what it reminds me of, is the little boy looking at that counter. Well, the lady kind of felt sorry for him, so she went around there and uh, paid the person some money to give him some candy. And uh, she came up to the lady and says, Ma'am, are you married to God? You know, in a little boy's eyes, a little boy's mind, sometimes an act of kindness, we may think that it comes from God. And it did. She was trying to be kind. And so that's a witness. In our kindness, uh, in our goodness to others, in the way that we behave, in the, the grace and the kindness that we show one another to walk uh, and, and exp uh, show them, uh, give them the time, give them the talent that we have. And it's a reflection of what God, what, what better way of expressing or being a witness to the world than for someone seeing us act like a Christian ought to act. And this is what uh, he is wanting us to do here. Uh, the awesome sign of uh, to the world it is when uh, uh, a Christian reflects itself on the act of kindness and others can see Jesus living in us. Uh, so we need to walk the walk and talk to talk. I, I, I was reminded of what uh, is written back there in the uh, Old Testament in the book of Genesis uh, in, in in uh, chapter 5, I believe it is, uh, chapter 5, uh, one of my favorite uh, Old Testament characters is Enoch. And here's the reason why. In, in Genesis chapter 5, uh, down there in uh, beginning in verse 24, it says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not. For God took him. If you look at chapter 5 of the book of Genesis, if you go back to the beginning of it, it, it starts talking about the book of genealogies uh, with Adam. And, all of, and Adam, and it follows with several different people, with Seth and so forth, uh, with Enoch. All of those people lived into the hundreds of years of age, uh, according to the book of Genesis there. They, some lived to be several hundred years old, 500, 600 or more years of age. And you, can, you can get that genealogy there. But when you come down to Enoch, uh, let's back up a few verses uh, to uh, verse 20 in Genesis 5. And it says, And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. And the next verse was, And Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. All of the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. According to the rest of them, he was a young man. He was young. Now, I don't know if the years were measured in the same way. If it did, maybe it was a way uh, of propagating the, the civilization. Uh, the longer they lived, the more children they could have, and so forth and so on. But maybe the years were only measured in uh, a few days, like our weeks are, or uh, uh, maybe a, a few uh, months, like our year is now. So uh, 
But whatever the time, he was younger compared as to others. He didn't die. It says, and God took him. That Enoch walked with God, and God took him there in verse 24. God took him because he was faithful. God took him because he walked with him, and he talked with God. And he uh, awarded him ahead of time. Uh, you know, none of us knows how long we have on, on this uh, earth, how long our lives will be. But if we walk with God, God will know it. And he may allow us to live to be 100 years old. Or he, he may take us when we're young. He, but he'll reward us in the same. I, I've often wondered about Enoch. Uh, that's one person I certainly want to talk to when I get to heaven. Uh, exactly how that took, what, did he go in a spaceship? Uh, what is he, you know, we, I, I watch all this stuff on TV about the, uh, Aliens and stuff like that. And a lot of it's just fulfilling scripture, friends. Uh, I'm not saying that there's really all these aliens and stuff out there, but a lot of stuff they're talking about does fulfill scripture and it acts just like what the, the Bible is talking about. So uh, uh, he walked with God. Uh, now, what does it mean to walk with God? Well, just simply speaking, first of all, it means that we walk in the same direction as God. If you're out uh, strolling with someone, with your spouse, a friend, or whatever, and you're taking a walk, you don't say you're walking with them if they're going the other direction and you go in a, a different direction. You say you passed. But if you're walking side by side and you're headed in the same direction, then you're walking with that person. So... You know, we, if we're walking with God, need to walk with God in the direction that God is going, not the way the devil is going. To walk with God means to walk at the same pace. Don't let God get ahead, and don't try to get ahead of God. Walk with him at the same pace, and uh, we'll be rewarded for it. And... Uh, also, not only do we walk in the same direction, walking at the same pace, we need to walk uh, for the same destination or the same purpose. God has a purpose for our lives, and we don't need to rebel Him. And the only way we can do that is walk with Him, uh, walk with Him, and talk with Him all along life's way. So walk in the, with the same destination or the same purpose. And also, if we're walking with God, it means that we are to have the same mindset. We are to have the same mindset that God has if we're going to walk with him so that he can relate to us. And how do we do that? Through prayer, through understanding, through reading his word, and through asking him and, tell, uh, ask, and allowing him to show us what mindset that he has. So that means that if we're walking with God, we're talking with him. We're communicating with him. And that's what it's all about, friends. In order to walk with God, we've got to talk to him and find out what God wants us to do. I remember back in high school, I, or some grade, I don't know what exactly grade it was, I was uh, supposed to learn the poem, uh, the, uh, what was the yellow wood or something, to... Anyway, two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not be one traveler and walk down both of them. So you had to take a... Ch a the road untaken. There you go. I'm glad somebody remembered it. Uh, so if you're walking with God, you take the same route that he does. You follow the same path that he does. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. If you take one and it leads away from God, you're in a mess. The devil will take over. But if you take that way that God is going, you're walking with him, you have no worries, my friend. Uh, I will, I'm, a, I'm a baseball fan, not as big as I was when I was growing up. I was a big Yankee fan. 
And uh, Mickey Mantle was my hero uh, baseball. And I loved old Yogi Berra, though. And Yogi-isms uh, have become a part of uh, everyday living for a lot of folks. And uh, Yogi Berra once says, when you come to a fork in the road, what does he say? Take it. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. Well, that's what we need to do. We, when we come to a fork in the road, we need to decide if we're going to keep going this way or that way. We need to find out which way God's going. He'll always lead us in the right way. Walking with God. Uh, talking the talk and walking the walk. And he'll always lead us in the right direction. Let us pray.